Welcome to the Two Disabled Dudes Podcast. We believe life is about how we react. Thank you for tuning in today. I am Sean, and I'm glad you're here. This is Rare Disease Day. This is publishing somewhere in the evening of February 27th, maybe the morning of February 28th, and because it's the rarest day of the year, every four years or however it works, (laughs) February 28th, sometimes February 29th, is known as... As Rare Disease Day. So today, we celebrate and we honor all that's happening in the rare disease space to make the world a better place for those of us with disability, especially rare diseases. Not only making it a better place, but actively pursuing treatments and cures that will improve the quality of life for over 300,000 people worldwide. Kyle, what about you? Rare Disease Day, kind of a big day for you, especially in the career world. You're working with FARA, Patient Advocacy Organization. Do you have big plans today or any events? Yeah, really excited. But before I get into that, Sean, I wanted to point out that, you know, as two people with rare diseases, we should probably know a little more about leap year. Like it, how that works when it happens, you know, <laughs> all that stuff. Well, so, is is it every four years? I, that that's my or understanding, but I couldn't <laughs> tell you with any confidence. <laughs> oh, all right, every now and then, <laughs> yeah. there's an extra day. <laughs> <laughs> it's very rare. All right, so you and I are doing a patient panel with the Jeff Foundation. The Duchenne Muscular Dystrophy Community, and we're doing this panel with four people who are really accomplished in their lives despite their disease. They see life beyond circumstances, and so that's what what we're going to be doing on Rare Disease Day. And I'm pretty excited. By the time you're hearing this, we're probably doing it in that moment. It'll be on Rare Disease Day. And of course, we look forward to sharing that conversation here on the Two Disabled Days platform in the near future. With that being the last day of February, we also want to remind you it's your last chance to grab one of our calendars for the year at a 20% discount. You can choose a wall version or a desktop version. So be sure to get online to disableddays.com slash shop to save that 20% upon checkout. Just type in the code season seven, all lowercase spell the word season out, followed by the number seven, no space for 20% off. Do it. Okay. Kyle, it's time for what say you. In this segment, we're taking a moment to find a listener review, and today's review is coming from user PTomKZ. I'm pretty sure, just like you are, Kyle, this is coming from our friend Paul. Paul gave us five stars, and he writes, I highly recommend this podcast. Kyle and Sean are an incredible duo. They dive into all sorts of topics with some pretty cool guests. Funny, emotional, educational, definitely worth your time. Thank you, Paul, for the kind words. One reason, Kyle, I love this one and I I chose to highlight this review today is Paul isn't affected by rare disease personally. And besides you and maybe some other friends, I don't think he's got, you know, a deep, experience with disability or rare disease, yet he listens to our show and he enjoys it and he encourages everybody. He highly recommends the mm-hmm. podcast. So, Paul, thank you for that. Yep. Um, the piece of it I wanted to talk about, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we named off some interesting guests that you and I have 
have found interesting over the years. But he he specifically mentions all sorts of topics. Right. So I'm curious, Kyle, when you think about certain topics that we have touched on over the years, what is something or what is one that sticks out to you? Well, gene therapy is sort of the next step in a lot of patient communities for really, really promising therapy for lots of different diseases. And we had a panel with AvroBio, and they invited three people who have experience with gene therapy. And we did that panel in episode 159. And I really enjoyed that because it's... One thing in my head to think about gene therapy and what it might mean for everyone. And then not that much different, I guess, but it puts a flavor on it when there's people who have actually experienced it and gone through the trial and and know what it's like. So I really Mm -hmm. like that episode and that topic. Yeah, nice. It was nice to get a perspective from some experience. For me, I went way back. Um, one of the topics that comes to mind for me, especially as it was, you know, if I think of it as an interesting one, is all about nutrition. Mm-hmm. We've talked several times about nutrition. I remember, you know, a little snippet with Barbara mm-hmm. when we were talking about drug development and how important nutrition is Snickers. when she's preparing for a marathon yeah, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I really think back to... I, I think one of the first conversations was with Dr. Liz Applegate mm-hmm. out of UC Davis, episode 16. She taught me a thing or two, or maybe maybe she didn't teach me a thing or two, but the way she packaged yeah. nutrition and how vital it is just made it stick with me a little bit differently. In fact, one of the things that I liked about her messaging was fast food is always available, but it doesn't always have to come through a drive through I remember her specifically mentioning yogurt mm-hmm. or cottage cheese. You know, you can just pick that up off the mm-hmm. aisle or the shelf in the grocery store, and, and it's fast. Right. It's ready to eat, and it's protein, or it's fiber, or it's a little bit of energy yeah. for uh, an hour or whatever it is. So I'm like, oh my God, you're right. An apple yeah. could totally be fast food without all the fat or the sugars or whatever else comes with it, you know? Yeah, I like that redefining the term fast food. Totally, yeah. But I also started thinking about uh, another one we did, nutrition related, and I don't remember the episode number, but way back early on, we did an episode with Dr. Shana McCormick, mm-hmm. and I I want to say somebody else joined us, but that's the one where you and I started logging mm-hmm. everything we ate, or yeah, yeah. was it one? I don't remember, but we had a little bet going on, and we shared publicly of what we were eating and all that, so that was just a fun exercise and an interesting topic. Yeah, it go, it goes along with the conversation that you had a few weeks ago about just tracking everything, right? And what we put into our bodies, what kind of money we spend, um, and how valuable totally. that is to track stuff, yeah. yeah. So, Paul, thank you for inspiring today's opening segment. Let's get into the conversation. I recently wrote a column for FA News. A lot of you have probably read or followed me there. Thank you so much for that. I wrote a column with them called No Good Excuse. The title of this one is While Pondering FA and Life, I Remain Hopeful. And throughout the process of writing this and pondering, I thought, man, Kyle, there there could be something worth a discussion between you and I in this space. And we'll link the column in the show notes so listeners, you can go read it on your own time. But I'll kind of paraphrase, right? There's two big things that the column touches on. It really stems from one big question that I asked myself not too long ago, how does F.A. play into my five-year or ten-year plan? You know, when we launched Season 7, 
we're going to spend a few minutes talking about where we want to be five and ten years from now. And I realize that I often forget about F.A. Yeah. in those kinds of totally plannings or whatever it may be. It's not always my forethought, you know? You know, when I talk about buying a house... I'm not thinking about how close I am to a hospital or do I need to be close to a hospital. You know, when I think about a dream car, I'm not dreaming about a Chrysler minivan that has a ramp. You know, I'm not. Those those kind of things aren't front and center. Wait a minute. That, that's such a cool vehicle. What are you talking about? You know, they actually, the, yeah, they, they can be really nice. But uh, I just started to think, right. you know, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm not saying I... Everything has to revolve around F.A., but I imagine, to some degree, F.A. should be given some serious consideration. So I'm not saying good or bad one way or the other. I just realized, for me, I don't... I kind of sometimes forget that it's a thing and that it's going to get worse without a treatment. Totally. No, I so relate to that. I talked about a little while ago that I started going to therapy for the first time. And the first conversation I had with my therapist, he was asking about the things I wanted to talk about in our dress. And I told him, you know, all the stuff about relationships and and work and career, whatever, everything, right? And I said, I'm not sure that F.A., plays into the situations as much as we might think because obviously it's a big part of my life and you know i was really downplaying the disability and the rare disease part of my life and come to find out you know i've been seeing this therapist for uh over six months now and like almost every session now He's like, do you remember that first conversation that we had when you yeah. said that disability was not going to affect the things in your life? Wow. <laughs> so, you know, I can certainly relate, especially like we talk about life beyond circumstances, right? And we're thinking yeah. of those yeah. goals, those big, big things in our life and trying to look past the difficult circumstances. And, and oftentimes that means we don't necessarily address them, right? And mm. and figure out what they really mean. So I really related to that part of your column. So I do want to ask you a question about buying a condo, but I, I want to hang here for a minute with your therapist. So I say that so you can help me remember. Do you think... Has your therapist helped you realize that um, maybe it was a coping mechanism for you to say it's not the biggest factor? Uh, or or kind of what what is the point of talking about it in every session? What's kind of, I guess, their perspective on whether that was a, a thought process that was healthy or not? I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. It does make sense, and I don't know that he has a certain opinion we haven't addressed directly, but I think it's pretty obvious that that's sort of what we're saying when he reminds me that that's what I thought, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think it's been valuable to address the fact Mm -hmm. that F.A. really is obviously a big part and not just brush over it without addressing it you know yeah interesting so going back to your condo you know i mentioned when i'm buying a house i'm not i'm not thinking about location necessarily for medical reasons i i just want a pretty view right right? or i want the beach or mountains or something uh when you went and bought your condo last year two years ago now were you thinking about oh, shoot, this place doesn't have a ramp. Was that a big factor? Or was it just a matter of we can add one so it's no big deal, it's it's a good deal or it's a good place or a good location? And what were some of the deciding factors for you when purchasing or shopping around town besides price? Number one for me was proximity to the bike trail. Mm-hmm. That was the top priority for me, and I'm Mm. glad that I did that. 
you know, the ramp and the width of the doorways and accessibility issues, that was certainly a huge, huge factor. I could sure. hardly even get into this place that I'm in right now when I came and looked at it because mm. we had to put a ramp out front for me to be able to get in by myself. And so, I mean, in that respect, it was a big factor, but, you know, we looked at the possibility of making improvements after I moved in, so. Maybe that's where my head is at sometimes. I I don't forget about F.A. That's certainly mm-hmm. not not feasible you know as soon as i stand up i'm reminded right right. i have this condition um or reach over to grab a glass of water like like it it doesn't fade right so it's not that i forget about it but i i feel like when i think about something i want to do like go on a cruise or go live in denver or go travel and see friend i I don't know a certain job or whatever right yeah I automatically just start thinking that's possible. And right. then once I have my mind made up, then it's like, okay, how can I make it happen with that face? So it does come into play, but that that isn't one of the bigger deciding factors. Yeah, no, and I think that's a really important point, Sean, because we referred to it for the last few episodes. If you start with all the reasons, all the logistics and the reasons you might not be able to get there, you'll you, never, never get there. But yeah. if you if you see it and you commit and then figure out how to get there, that's the mm. way to go, right, a lot of yeah. times. Yeah. I think about climbing Mount Everest, right? I most likely will never do that. But that's in the back of my head, I'm, I still think I can. Yeah, it would just take a different approach than most, or I, you know, I really don't know just because of the balance issues and walking issues and how little bit of time you have to get to the summit and turn around within hours or whatever it may be. So I really don't know if it's feasible because of FA, but I've n- I haven't given up on that idea that it could be right. Yeah, because all those things that you just mentioned, that's like stuff that you just figure out, right? Yeah. And to a certain extent, I mean, sure, you might come into a few things that are like, all right, this is a complete roadblock. But there's (laughs) so many of those things that, that you just figure out. Yeah, that's true. Okay, the second big piece of this particular column has to do with how grateful I am when I look around think and, and, and meet people and read headlines and all the different things going on in the rare disease space, specifically right now for FA. And I realize that even though it may not be front and center for me at all times, it is a pretty big part of life. And I'm incredibly optimistic and hopeful because of how much work is going on that I sometimes don't even know about. Whether right. it's an advancement in science or whether it's a fundraiser, you know, some people selling cupcakes in their driveway or a big fundraiser like a bike ride or something that, that you might be a part of. All of these things just encourage me. I remember reading one particular article where there was a survey and Pharaoh was involved in a some other country organization got involved too, but they were doing a survey of a handful of patients with the taxia. And by handful, I mean, I think like 300 or almost 300. And there was talk of how many of those folks want to help with clinical trials or want to participate. It was something like almost 75%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think about that many people willing to be a part of the process and to, you know, get needles stuck in their arm 14 times a day or whatever the trial might look like and feel like. To me, that's encouraging, right? Because there's optimism in that. So many people are willing to play a part. And that just motivates me to, I don't know, keep 
keep moving forward, I guess. Yeah, it's a huge motivating factor, I think, for all of us. Because mm. when you see that other people are doing their part, it wants, makes you want to do yours even more. Totally. What yeah. are some things that you've seen or that you lean on that encourage you to, I mean, in a sense, keep your day job, right? Like, why do, why do you keep doing this? Yeah, that's a good question, you know, and that's something I've asked Jen Farmer, too, because she's been in this game for a long time. She's the CEO of Farah and a good friend, and, you know, I've I've asked her that, and the answer is partly because there's so many people putting their hearts and souls into it, and there's so much progress that we're very confident that we're going to find a treatment and a cure, Mm. obviously depending on how you define cure, but just all the action that you're talking about and all the different parties involved pushing for the same goal is what makes us confident. You know, it's somewhat cliche, but I often think about how close we are. And maybe we're Mm -hmm. still 20 years away. Maybe we're still 40 years away. We have no idea, but we've right. never been this close. So it's right. like, yep. you know what? Sure, I hope it's next year or five years from now, but even if it's 20 or 40, we couldn't and wouldn't have been where we're at right now if it wasn't for a couple thousand people and a couple hundred events and a couple hundred scientists all. Yep. Showing up to work and participate one way or another. Yeah, and Sean, there was a time when we didn't know anything, literally nothing about FA, right? Yeah. And just think of how far we've come. Like you said, we don't know how close close is, sure. right? But we've come a long ways, and we sure as heck are not looking back. And I'm hopeful for our listeners that this kind of mindset can be encouraging to you. FA is one thing. Your muscular conditions are one thing. Maybe you're up against a harder challenge or a more isolated condition. Uh, My hope is that you're able to find a resource and some optimism and friendship through things like this, whether it be a podcast or somebody else's or a book or Anywhere you can find some encouragement to know that there are people working on rare disease. And I believe every advancement informs the next, whether it's this condition or another condition. So much of science intertwines, and I really do believe that in the process of finding a treatment for this or that, we're going to find treatments for those and others as well. Yep. Yeah, that's really encouraging. I think another is just the collaboration in the rare disease community. Scientists are learning from other scientists and in different diseases and and Mm. making advancements based on that. And yeah, all of it coming together and forming each other is is really building. Yeah, that's huge. Thank you. I appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for letting me share another column on our podcast let's wrap this up with some thank you notes for this episode who is on your list today today i want to thank i think it's a repeat i think i maybe thank them every year but the kids at roberts elementary third grade yeah, classes thank them every year <laughs> 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 well, uh, apparently I'm very grateful apparently. because I always have a good time. I good. speak to them every year, and my favorite part is the questions. Yeah. You know, I share my story, and it's the same story every time because it's a new class of third graders sure. every time, right? <laughs> they always ask such thought-provoking questions, mm. and it's like, wait a minute, you're in third grade? <laughs> I didn't think Calm like down. that when I was in yeah. third grade. <laughs> 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 So one of the ones that sticks out to me from this year is what would you have done if you didn't have F.A.? Mm. And it really just sort of made me think, I mean, along the lines of, you know, us turning 40 and just everything we've done in life and how much different that would be if F.A. wasn't a thing and 
So, yeah, that was, I mean, I don't think I really give him a clear answer. <laughs> so how how did you respond? Do you remember? I said that it's important for all of us to keep an open mind and consider lots of different points of view because we never know when we're going to be in the situation. And so just being prepared for whatever can happen in life. I mean, it was a very general answer. Very political. The question caught me off guard a little <laughs> <Yeah>. bit. <laughs> so there's no answer in there, it sounds like. No. <laughs> no. Really. All right. <laughs> That's a good question, though. I agree. Very thought-provoking. Yeah. I have no idea what I would have done. I think, yeah, yeah who knows? I'm going to say thank you to Sol at the Global Repair Group. Apparently, when there's an incident with mobility equipment on an airline, airlines go through a third party like Global Repair Group, and I want to say they're contracted oh. with, if not all the airports or airlines, many of the major ones. So a couple of months mm -hmm. ago, my rollator was damaged. So I filed a claim, and it's taken a few months, but Seoul has been incredibly communicative. I don't know if that's the right word, wow. but keeping me in the loop. Yeah. You know, shipping is delayed. The manufacturer is out of stock. They're having to replace it. Um, and I've just been impressed with the way it's been handled. Of course... If I were talking about a power wheelchair, then waiting two months is not an option. But in my particular situation, it's been um, you right. know it's yeah. it's been okay for me. But the way they've handled that, besides it taking forever, I really do believe that's out of their hands. You know, it's shipping right. and all the different issues that the world is facing today with truckers and shipyards and whatever. So. To an extent, I, I don't think it's their fault, but they've been on it with ordering and getting it lined up and just emailing and calling. So I've been impressed with that yeah. recovery effort by them. That's really encouraging to hear because I think customer service has suffered a lot oh. in the past year or whatever it's been just because everybody's so short staffed so it's really encouraging to hear that they're on it yep i agree well like always we'd encourage you to express some gratitude in your life send a text write a note make a phone call do something write it in your journal something you're grateful for when we're actively thinking about the things that we appreciate in life it just helps us appreciate even more. All right, that does it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in today. If you're enjoying this show, please be sure to share it with a friend. You can also subscribe to our bi-weekly email reminder of what's going on here on the show. We look forward to talking with you next time. Until then. Keep living with urgency. Thank you for listening to the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. This show is possible with your support. Visit twodisabledudes.com to donate. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast app.